Welcome to the Big Three and Me with your friends Akil. I'm one of your hosts, Akil Patterson, my co-host uh, Dominic Hamilton, Akeem Hunt, and our homeboy from way back, the little man himself, Andrew Forte, from the Canuck from Canada. Gentlemen, welcome to uh, episode number whatever for Big Three and Me. We're happy that uh, we're here today, and I am so sorry about being late. Um, yeah, let's just get right into things about yesterday and today. <laughs> We're going to be joined by our good friend, Christine. She is a tattoo artist and one of the founders of the uh, OTC cast. Um, but before we get to her and her work, let's just go around the table and, and catch up on, on the week that was or was not for us here in crypto. Uh, you know, Dom, how was your week in crypto? Uh, it's been good, man. It hasn't been, uh, it hasn't been too bad at all. Um, you know, making making smart plays, smart decisions. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been good. What have been some of your smart plays this week? Um, KDA still. KDA is amazing. Um, Flux. Um, I got in on VRA. That's not doing too hot, but I mean, I already know it's going to do fine. Um, also, what else did I get into? I'm also in uh, BPRO. Um, definitely into that. Um and the only one LTO is also uh, looking good as well. But I can admit that LTO is the one I did not do any research on at all. Like I'm just in it. So it's uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it out later, though. All right. All right. Akeem, Akeem, how's your week been in the world of crypto? It's been good, Black. Thank you for asking. But uh. I would I, I like to say something like how, you know, Dom is in his projects and whatnot. But the projects that I'm looking into are the ENS, it's ENS and IMX, Immutable X. And they have been doing wonders this week. Um, it's a little slight pullback, but those are two networks, protocols that I do see here in the future, knowing that they're connected with all the big players in the game and whatnot. So. Those are the two I'm watching, and I and I love the Dow movement that's going. On. I'm just trying to figure out the you know the liquidity pools and stuff of that nature. But um, those are the stuff I'm. That's the stuff I'm looking at. Is uh, you said IMX had a pullback? Yeah, IMX. It's like a little, like a little stagnant right now. But when it was when it was chilling around the three dollars and like sixty cents area, that I think that was a time of like accumulation. Mm -hmm. So. Right, right, right. I think I'm falling in love. Good morning, Christine. You that? <laughs> Man, you What's up, Christine? The week. What's okay. up? Forte, why'd you open your mouth? Christine was talking. <laughs> <laughs> you background like that. I, I don't even know how to do it. I, th I think they uh, they hit the. There's a button that says um, backgrounds. Um, but yeah, uh, so before before we get to our last uh, our, our special guest today, let's uh, let's go with Andrew Forte. Forte, what's going on, brother? Give on, me man. So I've been really you know kind of heavy to pedal to the metal in terms of metaverse space. I think two plays for me in terms of the metaverse. Uh, I think the ILV and BTT coming out with its test net, its new metaverse feature. I think both those things in the future will do extremely well. I'm extremely bullish on ILV based on some TA that a friend of mine has done for me, Shell to Stanek. Um, and man, I'm looking forward to the best. Wonderful. Well, as everybody knows, um, I got scammed this week. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, Christine. Almost $11,000 out of my wallet. Um, but, it, you know, luckily it was none of my only coin was touched. Uh, and this just once again proves that I am never going to fucking meme coins again. They're probably going to have to edit that in post-production. Can you get a detail and tell people how you got scammed? Because you're because the way you got scammed wasn't a normal way of getting scammed. Considering no, was no, yeah. So what occurred was is that um, Hawk Hawk Finance was doing a uh, a, a contract, um, a new contract, and during the migration process, it, I mean, how many text emails links did we get spent? Like twelve, and it was send your coins here, send your coins there. But one of the things that said, if you had BSC, you can just leave it on the wallet. So I left mine on my wallet. But then when I 
I went out and I purchased this very expensive cell phone. <laughs> your Motorola. Uh, your Motorola. For iPhone? No. <laughs> uh. I, I purchased a new flip. Oh, uh, shoot. That's why you got a scam, bro. That's the secret. See, that's what I, that, I said the exact same thing. I said the exact same thing. He's got his Motorola fucking Motorola phone. The one before that was a Blackberry. Right, Black? <laughs> anyway, so, so basically, um, when I asked for help to get my coins back, I thought the name said Hawk Support Team. I did some research. There was a there was at one point an auto generator, but the one they, the link they sent me was off by like two letters. And you know, I didn't look and I ended up getting basically my entire wallet just kind of raided. Um, hey, stupid on me, but you know, lesson learned. Stick to my fucking Omi. And I don't care who But you who lost eleven thousand dollars? Yeah, they took eleven thousand. Wow. Like in total, because they got into my Coinbase wallet as well. Not my Coinbase account, but my Coinbase wallet. So I like shut that down and they left me like, they left me like six uh, XRP. The reason I'm really upset about the XRP though, is like, I've been holding that XRP since last November. Like I'm like, I bought it like 30 cents. So I'm very, anyway. So <laughs> back to better news. <laughs> Welcome our, our special guest, uh, the, the founder of the OTC, Christine, and is it Branham or Branham? Barnum. Barnum. Oh, yeah. oh, like Barnum and Bailey's. No? Like Barnum and Bailey. Yeah, yeah, what? Barnum and Bailey. Barnum yeah. and Bailey? Okay, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know Forte doesn't know what that is. Forte, those No, are you're called, 65, I'm too young for this. Those are, it was called a circus, kind of like you, you're a clown. Oh, so like me. <laughs> I'm the circus but you got scammed yesterday. No problem. <laughs> no, no problem, Black. No problem. Shots fired. <laughs> Dude, you're really like in a good mood for losing 11 grand yesterday because I wouldn't even be doing this freaking interview right now. Well, one thing you'll know about me is I... <laughs> it's, you know what? I, if, do I know how to... I, I take losses that are my fault better than I... I'd rather get rug pulled, actually. Like, I'd rather get rug pulled you know, than what happened. You did two weeks ago. Remember two weeks ago you got rug pulled? No. So, so Forte, remember, the Squid Game became an open contract. And I don't know who kept putting into it, but they kept putting – I mean, it got all the way up to, like, 52 but Black, cents. Your money, your money, but your money prior to is gone, though. Well, the thing was is uh, – yeah, no. Like, no, 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 no. So I moved some of that. So I converted some of that into USDT B, uh, BEP20. And I bought some stuff on BitTrue because remember, if you buy, you can convert the. Because yeah, yeah. I told you guys, I can't buy BNB for some fucking reason. Why? Again, well, because I'm, I'm, I'm like, technologically. Technology but Block, when, when, they, when they yanked the liquidity, your money was gone, though, wasn't it? The initial time? The, the initial time, but then when it came back, I could actually cash out for. How much for, did you have in there from when they before they yanked it? How much did you have in there? What was the, what was the amount? Oh, it was it was less than what you had before, right? Or more than what you had before when they when they opened it up the contract? No, no, no. When they when they opened up the contract, it was the same amount. I had the same oh, amount. Wow. I had the same amount in there. But then when it started to go up, like people started to buy in there, it just kept going up. So I was like, cool, and I. <laughs> And then I pulled my, I pulled money out. They must have figured they were being recorded as a scam. So they opened up the contract. Whatever it was, but you know, so I, anyway, but let's talk with Christine um, <laughs> because she, she is giving us Christine. Um, number one, thank you for coming on. We were so excited that you agreed to be here, especially Akeem Hunt. Akeem was really excited that you were agreeing to be on this uh, podcast with us. Oh, what, what? I'm not supposed to say that. Oh, was that a secret? <laughs> Was that a secret? I, Yo, I'm sorry. See, Akil is like, he's about starting nonsense when nonsense don't have to be started. But uh, we can carry on with the show. <laughs> <laughs> and I know Dominique was happy as well because you and Dom are old friends from way back on the Twitter space world. You know, you guys have been talking for months yeah. before Twitter spaces. I brought him into a uh, crypto-ish time. Did you? Uh, okay, so Christine, tell, tell us about yourself and tell us about how you brought Dom into the crypto world. So about myself, I'm Christine Barnum. I'm 37. Uh, I live in California. I own two businesses, an art studio and a hair salon. 
I also run or created the OTC club. Um, it's about, it's like a finance uh, podcast ish spaces ish um, about OTCs, stocks, crypto, NFTs, stuff like that. I met Dom um, in the OTC world with stocks and then we became pretty good friends trying to do better there as it was dying off. And then we slowly started transitioning and diversifying into crypto. So, yeah. And now we're here. Care. And now you guys have a podcast. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Yeah. I co-sign all that. I so what know. is this? You guys work for um, G Media, right? And you guys have the podcast going. What is the, like, what do you guys do? Oh, well, this is the big three and me where we cover, we're going to, we're more of a lifestyle thing, right? We're going to cover the big three. We're going to cover crypto, competition, and culture. Nice. We're a lifestyle. Yeah, three C's. So that's the big three. And we always want to make sure that our guests are reflective of some part of that. And right now it sounds like you're, you're quote unquote, what my, my, my uh, boyfriend would say is a boss bitch. You know what I'm saying? Girl? <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh like, yo, I didn't realize you owned two other businesses and you're a tattoo artist. Yeah. Yeah. It's very, I'm tired all the time. <laughs> it's cool. I and love you have it. a 19 year old too, right? 18. Okay. Uh-huh. And then my stepdaughter, she's 13. So busy, but it's fun. And I love this space, you know, so I will always make time for it. And I think we're in infancy stage with the NFTs and metaverse. I'm like addicted to metaverse and I want to <clears throat> make sure that I'm super early in everything on metaverse and that I don't get rug pulled. <laughs> Christine, do you think that crypto saved Twitter? Or the OTC and stocks save Twitter? Um, I feel like it was there. Okay. Like it's always been there. Because there was like, are you talking about now? Or are you talking about like when BTC? Yes. Yes. I think over the past year and a half, we've crypto and, you know, crypto Twitter and OTC Twitter, stock Twitter has really, you know, exponentially grown. Do you think it's yeah. safe? Because I wasn't using Twitter up until the past six months ago for obviously crypto. Reasons. But you're like 12. Yeah, I'm like 12 and a half. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think, I don't know if it saved Twitter because it's always been there. Like the main thing about Twitter is a lot of the, because we're in the finance space, right? So of course we feel like it's huge. And of course the meme stock stuff really blew it up because it brought a bunch of retail investors in. So finance, Twitter became an even bigger thing, but TMZ, stuff like that has always made Twitter huge. Like with the celebrity gossip and they're always the Kardashians, like everything like that, that has a huge, like it brings Twitter to life all the time. And I think this whole um, rush into investing, I think it does do a huge number for Twitter, but I don't think it saved Twitter. I think it's always been there because celebrities go there to address a lot of the gossip going on like that's where they go to directly talk to people versus like reporting to i don't know freaking sun magazine or whatever the heck they're called <laughs> yeah i think that's uh so 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 twitter is not twitter's platform is so much better now that we can talk to one another yeah um, i felt like it was so toxic yeah spaces is cool i think that really helped twitter like right there, um, not just, I mean, just with everyone, like what you said, everyone gets to talk now and you get to hear people's voices. You get to hear personality versus like assuming the tone of the text that they sent you, you know, like you could be like, you could be an asshole and like tweet something out and you, your tone is completely different. And everyone's going to take it the way they take it. And I'm sure, I'm sure you guys have seen that. You said something, you're like, that's not what I meant. And they're like, well, you said it like this, but the tone was different, you know, but now that there's spaces, you could tell what someone's saying. You could either argue with them or laugh with them. So, Christine, we know you're a huge, huge sports fan. So let's get in the competition <laughs> sector of this conversation. All right. Tell us your three favorite sports and then tell us the sport you last attended and why. So I like, I really like football. I love boxing. 
Um, I love hockey. I think the last thing that I attended was a football game. I think I can't even remember anymore. I feel like I have COVID brain now (laughs) because Dom gave me COVID over the uh, over spaces I literally got it the week after I was like making fun of him. Like, what? You have COVID? Like, this is the weirdest thing, dude. Like, are you going to be dead? Like, can I have your refrigerator? Remember talking about that. And then next week I got it. That was a point in time when you had gotten, uh, what was it? They had got you hacked off Twitter twice within literally a month. Yeah. It was, it was literally bad karma for her because, and then she started a space and she invited everybody to come in there and ask me questions about COVID. <laughs> and like, I was like, it literally was just bad karma for her. Like, <laughs> her shit just went downhill from there. Like, dude, it was so crazy. I was like, do you guys want to um, talk to a live patient that has COVID? I'm like, ask anything AMA for COVID patient. So, whatever, man. I had no idea you could give COVID three spaces till you gave it to me. Hey, you know, there's a first time for everything. We survived. That's the important part. Definitely, definitely. I think uh, the kill got snatched into the blockchain. I know. <laughs> hey, really Zoom rug time. pulled him. Yeah, the hacker hacked him again, took all his stuff, took him and all his stuff. Damn. But um, he really got rug pulled right now. He really did. You said, uh, so you said football was your last sporting event you attended? I feel like it was, but I'm trying to remember. I feel like it was football or a boxing event. Christine, but ever since COVID started, I didn't, I haven't went. See, who's your favorite boxer? Who's your favorite football team and then hockey team? If you could provide those three. Um, my favorite I boxer. He's tweeting a lot about boxing. I see tweeting a lot about boxing when boxing's on on the weekends and stuff. I see those tweets. I like Triple G and I like David Lemieux. Um, and then I like uh, MMA stuff too, like UFC. I really used to like George St. Pierre. I think he's back now, right? Um, and then football. I don't want you guys to make fun of me, but I like the Raiders. Because of Vegas? No, I've always liked them. And everyone's like, oh, you like losing? Like you like punishment? I'm like, I don't know. I just like them. So... That's my, uh, that's my real dad's favorite team. Really? Yeah, yeah. He loves the Raiders. I played for them for about, what was it, four months or so? You did? Like, when? Yeah, that was my rookie. That was like my rookie team. Like, I, I got, um, I was on draft free agent there. And then um, literally, like the I hated it. It was the worst <laughs> team of all time. Like, Why? I don't like it at all. Well, I mean, at the time, the culture was just bad. Like, you had, you had players cussing out the coaches. Like, it was just new for me. Like, I was I came from, like, the military environment, and then I went to Mizzou, so it was very, like, structured there and whatnot. Then I, I went to the Raiders, and it was, like, open, wild, wild west, open field, players cussing out coaches, telling coaches, you'll get fired before I get fired. Like, I'm like, whoa. Like, I was like, I didn't know it went down like that. So when I saw that, I was just like, wow. And then – like the locker room at the time, I don't know if it's still like that. Like I'm talking about, you see the pipes in the ceiling. You saw a roach run across the ground. Like it was. That was bad. in Oakland. Yeah, that was in Oakland. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's probably way better now because their stadium is like the best stadium now, and then yeah. their locker rooms are probably. Yeah, that so. was back in 2011, 12, 2012. Yeah. Well, first yeah. off, oh, oh, how are you having roaches in your locker room in Oakland? A roach <laughs> ran across the ground. I am not. I kid you not. No lie. That came out of somebody's bag. I'm telling you. That, <laughs> that came out of somebody's book. Listen, because I don't think there are a lot of roaches up in Oakland now. There are a lot of uh, other vermin, but <laughs> a little dry for them. But it's pretty bad. Because I think That's roaches. Cool, yeah, roaches need moisture. Um, Christine, um, if Dom was still on the Oakland Raiders, would you cheer for him? Yeah. That's a lie. Uh, we, the, and the Only lie because he was on the Raiders. <laughs> Only because he was on the Raiders, though. <laughs> yeah, that's I'll the only reason. Are you still a Raiders fan? Yeah. I've been for years. And then I always ask myself, like, why do I do this to myself, man? I'm like, I get so stressed out. And I'm like, and then <laughs> Sunday comes. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and this is my first um, fantasy football with you guys, too. And this is super fun. So how are you doing in the fantasy league, might I ask you? I feel like I was starting to do really bad, but I think I'm like fourth now. Are you ahead of coming after you guys? Are you ahead of Akil in the rankings? 
I don't know. I think I'm no. right under you, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I sit at number three behind Forte and Dom. Yep. Uh, so it's one, two, three, four. We're all here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but we do have a, a, a great special guest. Akeem Hunt is last place in our league. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. We have one, two, three, four, ten. I didn't know you was last place, bro. He's last place. Are you even looking at them or playing or anything? No, ma'am. <laughs> uh, That's what everybody says when they're losing. It's fun. I like it. No, it is fun. It was fun to be Forte this week. But uh, who do you got this week, Christine? Um, I don't know. I think it was Jess or something. Black, I am, Black, I am happy for you that you, you managed to beat me in fantasy after the week that you had. I'm, I'm yeah, happy. yeah, yeah. I, I, I needed the win. I needed the win. But ultimately, we'll be fine. Um, so, oh, wait, Black, ahead, ask me a question because we're on the topic of football. So how did your Baltimore do last night? Yeah, I was wondering, like, what happened? Um, how did you feel? How did you sleep at night? How did you feel this morning? I just want to know. <laughs> I got high. And I went to sleep like I always do. Oh, like, you didn't watch Baltimore against Miami last night because that was a. Oh, uh, oh, oh no! I said I got high and went to sleep like I always do. Okay, so uh, you're not you're not you're not in the best headspace than after the game, I assume. No, I saw. Look, that was a that was a terribly played game. Okay. It they they suck. Yeah. And I am so glad I didn't put any money on it. Yeah. That is it. Like, but I honestly, it's only it. because I missed the cutoff time for, for DraftKings. Look, Akeem and I want to know, who told you that Miami was going to win yesterday? Who told you? So, Christine, how are you doing today? Um, back over to our guest. Well, um, guess what? I just looked at my matchup, and I'm I'm against Akeem. Oh, Christine, that's an easy win. This easy weekend. W. Christine, that's a bye week. It's a bye week, Christine. It's a <laughs> bye week for you. But my thing is, now that she has made that clear, I will get back on my shit. <laughs> <laughs> it already started. It's too late. Well, you can change. You can change the other players. You just can't change. Oh yeah, that's true. Right. that's true. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I'm already. I have ten. You have zero. <laughs> did a player? Did I have a player in there that was like on an IR or anything? Or you know, I gotta you, check. That. You better Google this stuff yourself. You're asking this very busy, very sophisticated young lady to do all your work for you, Akeem. Let's let's, <laughs> let's get it together. Yeah, I'm just um, trying to win. I'm just trying to win. That's yeah, you all. didn't have anyone that played on Thursday. I got a chance still. All right. So let's transition over to our cultural piece. Uh, Christine, cultural. Uh, okay. This is always one of those conversations where I, I like to to dig into something a little bit controversial and you brought it up first. So let's just get into it. I did. Um, yeah. You brought it up. And so I'm going to go, uh, Paris Hilton, you brought up Paris Hilton and luckily, I did? yeah, you, you, yeah. You're talking about Twitter and where Paris Hilton and those people used to go. And luckily enough, I'm such a tool bag and a nerd that I found out that Paris Hilton is getting married and she posted a bunch of stuff on Twitter. Um, is that, that that L? Uh, what was that? I said, who took that L? I mean, is it an L? Because she's like a freaking, she's so rich. Yeah, she's the heiress to the Hilton Foundation. Yeah, how is that an L, Dom? You freaking yeah. know? It's about what? right here. Not, <laughs> not the pockets. Are you talking about it's always that you'll have to be, uh, you'll have to be compared to Ray J? I think you're getting them confused. <laughs> Ray J wasn't that. Ray J was Kim. Oh, Ray J was Kim. Who was she? She had a tape too. I don't know. It was something. It was someone else, though. It might have been Forte, but moving <laughs> on. Only me, yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on. I, I want to find out because now I need to know. Like, so you about to go detective mode? Yeah, because <laughs> she I married know. somebody named Carter or something like that. Black, Carter? Black. Uh, I just got a message from one of our, one of our viewers. They want to see your phone. They want to see your 1965 phone. Can we see it, Akil? F you. F Can you. We I'll no, you cannot see my phone. Is this live? No, it's not. Was not it's the same reason that, like, before he's like, and we're live. And I was like, but we're not live. We're, we're pre recorded. <laughs> and, then, and then you said, sorry for being late, as if it's not recorded. Well, well, I knew I was late. I, I'm an honest human. That's why. But they, don't, they don't know if you're late, though, the viewers, because it's recorded. 
Or Tay, you need like better lighting on your face, and Dom, you need to like have like, like, face if you like a frame on in the background or something. Dom, like a, I don't know how to do. Uh, I be in the universe like them. I don't fucking. Oh, no, like I'm even trying to, like, like a picture frame like this thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you do. I need to go to a separate part of my house, or you can add a virtual background. No, that's what I said. I was trying to do. It says mine is blank though. I don't have no. You know, you guys should have the G Media thing behind you, guys. That's what I, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think all you gotta do is just screenshot it and then like upload it to the photos and you can do it like that. Oh. I don't know, but I am now just did it randomly too. Look at this. Oh, look at where are you? You're in San Francisco. I'm in San Francisco now. San Francisco treat. <laughs> I got my uncle Ben. I'm ready to go. <laughs> Listen, let's talk about that as culture, right? When they got rid of Uncle Ben, I was actually kind of sad. I was like, but I thought Uncle Ben owned the company. I didn't Me think too. <laughs> I, didn't I know was like, why are they getting rid of like um, people that own the freaking company? Like, I don't like. And then they even got rid of the girl on the butter, the Indian girl on the butter. I was like, didn't uh, she like own that okay. place? Yeah, that's why I was like, I thought these people owned it. <laughs> I was like, who's complaining about these? Like, is it even like of their culture that they're complaining, or is it like somebody else complaining that it's not right? <laughs> the the latter, I'm sure. I mean, literally, the one of the funniest things I always find, and uh, if you guys don't know, I'm currently living in Portland, Oregon. Oh um, Lord. Yeah. What it's always somebody who's not white, black, or Asian American telling other people like, "Yeah, we've got to stop Asian hate. Black Lives Matter," but only when I say they matter. And you're like, "What? Uh, this is awkward." Only, only convenience. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only convenience. Oh, I notice man. that all the time, and my clients will be talking, and I'm like, I'm "Like you just contradicted yourself. Like, what do you mean? Like you always say this, and now you're saying this." But and I started realizing, I'm like, "It's only when it's convenient for everyone is when it is." It's really weird. We uh, since we know you can, are we gonna get half off the of tattoos if we want to come out there? Yeah, I'm gonna tattoo G Media on you guys. Don't like not. So Don, Don has a great background. For me, I would oh, like. Cute. So Christine, you know that. So the last time, and so the last time, and it'll happen next year, and we'll see about getting you tickets. My mentor um, is it, it has a as a box suite at the um, at the stadium, the Coliseum there, and because you're you're out in LA, right? Yeah, on the outskirts now because LA is dumb. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, <laughs> but you know when I when me and my boyfriend come next year, we'll make sure we'll connect with you. I'll yeah. get a tattoo of Throg. Uh, because I really, because I, I have this thing about frog. If you don't know, like a, a like a frog, frog or like Pepe the frog. Oh, no, it's called Throg, it, and it's a it's a uh, it is a comic book character. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was t well, that was uh, it's a former athlete turned into a frog by a, a sorcerer's spell, but he yields the power of Thor. So he's got a what? hammer. I never heard of that. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. So next time I'm out I in LA. Do that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do that for you. Isn't that, like a, uh, isn't that like a VV character? It is a, It is one of the characters on VV. It so is a, I'm really surprised by that answer. I'm really surprised by it. That what? It's That's a character. Something. Yeah, I'm uh, really surprised. You are not. That is so facetious. Oh, anyway. Wow, surprise. Christine, um, do, you accept, do you accept crypto for other your businesses? For the tattoos? Yes, and your salon. Yeah. You somebody, do? um, somebody actually, I think it was Dogecoin Militia. He came, made an appointment, and he paid with Doge. It was cool. Right. Um, and I keep trying to tell my clients, like when I at the end, I'm like, all right, like, are you gonna pay with, you know, cash, zip, or you want to use Zelle, Venmo, whatever? I'm like, you want to send me some Ethereum, <laughs> Doge, like whatever? And they're like, what? Nice. So what, what's kind of the percentage of people that pay you in crypto, Christine? Is it, is it, I can imagine it's not very common at all. It's like 0 0.01, dude. Uh, I think I've had, I've had like two people or three people, I think, that have done it in the span of like nine years. Can I, can I pay you 2000 safe moon? No. <laughs> now move your head for a second. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look how cute that baby is. That's the most <laughs> important thing. Aww. 
I was thinking you're using something that was already preset. I, I, no, I don't have anything. I'm telling you, there's nothing in there. It's just blank. No, Zoom has preset ones. They didn't have Galaxy photos in their freaking. Yeah, they did. They rugged me. <laughs> you didn't take that San Francisco photo. Like, see, everyone else get everyone else got photos. Oh, like Dom. they rugged me. I'm telling you, there's, no, there's nothing there. <laughs> they don't like Dom. <laughs> You guys yeah. tell Dom how to do it. He's like sad. It's literally you just go click the little stop video button. You hit That's the it. up arrow. You go to choose virtual background. You go down to background and filters. And then they should have several of them, like none, blur, San Francisco. There you go. Blue See, Blue I don't have it. I don't have it. Hawaiian it's Island. Good fire or something i think that's the there's even the roller world. coasters or something like we could all be on a roller coaster right now and yeah, it's I like just, live i ain't got nothing i got shit like this though like um oh <laughs> yeah, i got i can do stuff like that but uh, uh, like my uh character on fucking twitter <laughs> Oh my <laughs> gosh, dude. I don't have none of that other shit though. Oh Lord, this is so much fun. Christine, you've made, <laughs> we've done a couple of other episodes and uh, this is the most fun we've had. Because, I'm glad. Because you are actually a, a riot, uh, number one. You love sports. Oh, let's talk about this stupid ass Emacs that keeps getting like pumped everywhere. How is <laughs> Emacs the only crypto in America? Like, pumped by like celebrities all over the world and Dom it's started it oh my god i started it no <laughs> love emacs bro didn't who came or who was it maybe it was it. fire flame nick and matt it was matt christine exactly oh okay yeah and then wasn't it getting pumped by like what you guys are saying like a bunch of celebrities uh, so shout out to Emacs. They have no white paper. So wait for that Tom Brady uh, advertisement as well as Michael Jordan one. Shout out to Emacs, man. No free shout outs, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know. They must have, like, hooked them up big time. And I'm sure a lot of them don't even, they're not super into crypto. So something that someone's pumping to them and gives them enough of a celebrity fee or something, they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Emacs. Easily. Easily. They're probably not even really watching their accounts like someone else is doing it. So they're not too worried. If they were, they'd be like, hey, you guys shield me on something dumb. Christine, did you ever put money into Emacs? I assume you did. No. Okay. I didn't. Okay. So you're one of the more intelligent people in the space. Good for you. Why? Um, you did guys you did? Um, oh, some, yeah. of them, some of them did. Yeah. 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 I, 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 I got scammed once. That's all I need. Yeah. What are you guys getting into now? I bought some um, GM yesterday and I bought ENS, some... ENS Christine or no? Any so I'm, I'm getting ENS probably today. I'm kind of just waiting for gas. But I bought Atari token and I bought a GM last night. Wait, wait, wait. So like, what is our prediction for ENS? Nothing you hear on the show is financial advice. Yeah, it's not financial advice. But Entertainment what's our only. I don't know. I feel like it could go. It just depends like how the people take it. Like if they really think it's valuable, because we put the value in something, you know, like so us. But I think that it almost can be a transition from like how we had the dot com transition and it was weird, but some people got in. A lot of people got in early. And then I feel like it could be that. It could shift into where it could be, you know, like everything's dot ETH dot btc dot whatever like i think we can really move into that and if we get into that now and the community and the world accepts that as the new shift then we're all going to be super rich living on a villa next to each other so we talking <laughs> we talking like we talking about 2000 a coin we talking like what's the future look like for ens Me, I feel if like everybody were to adapt happens. that I don't know. That's like a hard one, but I feel like I could see a thousand a coin. Mm. What do you guys think? I know Akeem got it on the money, probably. <laughs> As usual. <laughs> what? Nah, I just see it. I see it. Um, like you said, if if it's if we're going into decentralized domains to where we're owning that domain or owning that domain, then I see this. I see this coin going to. That thousand dollar mark, or uh, even above that, I do yeah. see that. Yeah, I believe that, and I think they're 
um, they're really introducing crypto into a whole new thing that we had no idea, like uh, that name service. And then it's like your wallet. Like, that's cool. Right, um, right. I think Ethereum needs to get rid. I don't know. They need to fix that gas thing. It's sure. it's one of those things where I was talking to somebody the other day, like um, actually Jess made a great analogy of it. He said, it's like all your friends are going in an expensive club and it costs $150 to get into, but you can afford to get in the other club. That's only $5 at the door. He's like, where are you going to go? Are you going to go into the $150 club because that's where all your friends are. And I was like, that's a good analogy. I was like, but, I think they need to fix it because let's just say one day, like a, a, a big entire group start going to Solana and then everybody else start going to Solana and everybody else start going to Solana. And then it's just like, I feel like they'll eventually get weeded out because they'll make the gas prices a bigger issue. You know yeah. what I mean? So I, I think that I, eventually they got to do something about it. Yeah. And to. if we're just a small percentage in the crypto world, imagine when the world starts adapting it and starts using Ethereum, like, oh yeah, are you going to spend thousands of dollars on freaking gas all the time? Because that's what it is like, no. And then we're, you know, we're going to get taxed on it. Like no matter what, even though we don't want the government to be involved, they're making sure that we're going to freaking give them some money. So we're going to get taxed on the gas and that like, come on. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Oh, and ENS is not not financial advice, but it's also on um, Gate Diado. Gate Diado. Oh, for USDT. Gate yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, I'd rather. That's what it was. That's why I didn't buy it last night because I'm like, wait, I just need to get USDT instead. I don't want to use my E. Right, right, right. Mm. Yeah. I hate having to transfer anything. That's because I mean, can you get? But you can just transfer the Ether or, or using cash, Dom. It's USDT. Uh, I think Akeem's trying to talk, but he muted himself. Well, because how I see people doing it, uh, you know, you just send the USDT over to that exchange where you're trying to get ENS from. Or if you don't want to go the USDT route, you know how they take off like, you know, maybe taking off $50 sometimes or $40 for like transferring over. But if you um, go the XLM route, the fees are cheap. Or um, I heard Jess say she used the Tron route and the fees are uh, cheap with Tron. But XLM, like, you know how they see it with the uh, Western unions and the money grabs. If it's peer-to-peer, I'm going to use it as peer-to-peer, you know, and the transaction speed is just great. Uh, so that's what I use that for. Dan, I transfer that into the USDT and Dan, I purchase whatever asset that I'm fond of at that time. So, yeah, not fine. I'm- yeah, I, I just know that as we keep developing and growing in this space, that I, I'm actually, I'm more trusting of the exchanges now more than ever. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'll just keep my shit on the exchange because at least if something goes wrong with the exchange, I can sue those motherfuckers. Yeah, like they'll have to answer to you, right? Versus oh. it's like all on you. At least you have. That's a good yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. What do you and that's- oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, what do you guys think about like how Facebook is, you know, doing the metaverse mm-hmm. and how that's going to help shift everyone to Tom? <laughs> Tom's having more fun with these in the interview. Um, <laughs> I feel like it's going to help uh, the world or more people adopt, adopt into the crypto space, right? Because it's like forcing them because Facebook has like the world in Facebook. Even if you don't use it, you have an account or had one and you can never really delete it. So they have your information. Do you think Facebook will be successful right off the get-go or do you think it's going to be a trial and error process? I think trial and error process, like their Libra coin or whatever they had. Um, But who knows, maybe he learned from that mistake and he freaking hired a bunch of people that know what the hell they're doing. And we're going to be like, Oh shoot. Like he really. Do we know exactly what they're doing? Yeah. They're building a metaverse. I understand that, but like, so is is Facebook in itself going to be, you know, done like the way it's, uh, you know, the way it's set up right now? Like, is it done? Is it going to just change before our eyes? I think it's going to change before our eyes, and I feel like he's going to. So have you're going to force, you know, like the older crowd is on Facebook. So, like, are we like, are we forcing them to, you know, I mean, yeah live this life you know what i mean like because i feel like it's gonna weed people out they're just gonna be like like the older crowd i feel like they'll be like oh no i'm not doing this This looks complicated 
Like, no, you know but they I mean? love Facebook because they love like seeing family and this and that. And I think he's going to use that key to be like, you want to see your family and feel like it's real life. Welcome to Facebook metaverse. And they're going to be like, oh my God, I feel like I'm seeing you. I don't have to go leave my house because COVID. Like, <laughs> oh my God. That is so cringy. It sounds like a hostage situation. You'd be like, <laughs> you want to see your family? Then come over to the metaverse. Yeah. Oh yeah. Do you guys think there's a timeline though for Facebook and when they have to have this done by, or do you think it's kind of at their own pace? Because I feel like other other companies try to do the same thing they're trying to do, just not in a larger, the largest, you know, a larger scale. I feel like he wouldn't have had it announced if it wasn't close. Okay. Mm. Okay. So Christine, like so Christine, in your theory, then he's been working on this, or maybe trying to work on this for the past what, maybe year or two? We can say maybe. Yeah, I would say at least. And remember, he like had a lot of, they have a lot of technology we don't even know about, dude, that they've been messing around with. He has a lot of connections, I think. And that's why I like want to go into Atari coin, like pretty heavy, not financial advice, but because I think that they're trying to make a name for themselves again. And they're, every time I go into different, like, and I'm looking at different metaverses, Atari is like heavy in there. I'm like, this is weird. Like, they're trying to be in super involved in this. Is so. it? But is Atari yeah, like a pay to play thing, or is it I just don't know. okay? Because <clears throat> I know I know certain coins like ILB that we all mentioned is uh, is a pay to play type of thing. And I I'm think sure, play, I'm I sure think, it will be because that's going to be the thing that everyone. Yeah. Got, yeah. Facts. You got you some ILV, uh, Christine. What's ILV? Oh yeah. <laughs> Alluvium, Chris. Remember I texted you last week about alluvium? Oh, yeah. Alluvium. I didn't get it. Did you guys? Yeah, we all did. Not financial advice by any means. What is it, like $1,000 a freaking... 1200 I think, but, guys, right? 1200 Yes, 1200 But, Christine, this is how I break it down to people. I'm treating this like the metaverse Bitcoin. I am DCAing. I, I don't want to stop DCAing because I truly feel as if everything is connected, like the metaverse, what we just talked about, everything is connected. And it's so many connections with the projects that we call blue chips that's, you know, has ties within the movie. And it's just, I don't know, it, it's, it's great to think about because I used to be a, you know, a Pokemon, a Pokemon Maxi. Like I played all the Pokemon <laughs> versions. When they introduced that concept to me, I was like, oh, this is this is like genius. So that's how I look at it. I look at it like the Bitcoin of the metaverse and it's going to just keep growing. That's how I look at it. You literally get the play for ETH, Christine. I saw yeah. that. So Forte sent it to me and I was looking at it. But the thing that worried me is I was like, how about if it sucks? Like, because it's not out yet. So, right. Like, and I tell me that you guys haven't seen this, that there's so much hype on something. It looks really cool. And then it launches and then people are like, uh, I'm out. And then they freaking, yeah, and then I have always told myself like, man, don't go in before it, just go after, like maybe just buy in there, like enter there because at least, you know, if it's going to drop or not. And if it does drop and you still believe in the project, go in, um, you know, lower at a better entry or, I don't know. That's the only thing that worried me. And I was like watching different um, scenes of it and some of it looked different. But I, I see what you guys are saying. Maybe I'll buy one. <laughs> We're talking about IMX. ILV. ILV. We're talking about ILV. Oh, oh Alluvium. No, so um, Christine, Alluvium, <laughs> IMX, VV, all working together. Oh, they're all working together. Oh, yeah. So this is, this is, uh, this is definitely not financial advice, but when Jeremy Padwar... So Jeremy Padwar is a friend of the uh, of the show. Uh, he was on uh, one of our, uh, actually two of our AMAs. Yeah. Um, yeah, he is big into Vivi, but he's also one of the, the 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 franchisee licensors of Pokemon and Pokemon Go. Okay. And he's big into this. Like he's super bullish. So what's his role in it? He 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 licenses Pokemon out. Like, but is he but is he part of like the alluvium or is he is he just an investor? So he's an investor from the standpoint of the Omi coin and the whole metaverse system. Uh Jeremy Algodow uh is also a web 3.0 guy, 
And he's been doing a lot of data analysis around this. And he believes that anything in Web 3.0, they're all work on um, interconnection, like the interoperability. Yeah. And, and that is really what the meta, meta is trying to do. So meta is Facebook, obviously. Facebook yeah. is, is uh, nobody likes them, right? You're not going to get the developer work for you because guess what? Most developers don't want to work for a major corporation anymore. Right. You're like... I can make more freelancing. I mean, a real good developer can make seven figures as a freelancer. Why do I need to go work for you? What was that, Dom? I just said facts. Yeah. So if they're going to make seven figures on their own, why the hell do they need to go work for Meta? We've seen that in the space too, man. People have gone from project to project helping out each project. We've seen that in the space. Well, because good de good devs are hard to find. Like right. A good developer is hard to find. But when you can get them into your office or into your room, well, they're not going to work on one project. They're going to be like, yo, I got this other project over here. How are you going to support it? And that was something. So I actually did watch all two hours of that meta launch. Did you oh, guys? Wow. No. First off, number one, that was the, I have watched The Godfather a hundred times and this shit was longer than that. <laughs> it, it, yeah, dude, it was that long. It was like. So, so Block, so what are your top three metaverse coins then, aside from Omi? Uh, ILV okay. and the Metaverse Index. But unfortunately, I, I don't have those anymore. <laughs> they were taken <laughs> from my account. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. But my so only was not start all over. Yeah. Well, the, the worst part of it was is that I had gotten into ILV when, when Akeem and I found it, it was like 600 bucks. Yeah. It's gone. Like, it, it's like 1600 now. And it's like... I we should have put out a video when it was 600 because now you got all these people with all the followers putting out videos and they think they found it first. Yeah, oh. now they think they alerted oh. it. It's so crazy. First off, everything that everyone alerts everyone to, we found. Yeah, like, that's true. You guys need to uh, do the videos so people know. Well, that's why we're doing this podcast. But also, let's be very clear. There are, I mean, there was one guy that came into the room the other night, one of our Twitter spaces, and he was like, I found Ethereum when it was $10. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Do you still have it? He goes, no. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? I, I found Bitcoin when it was a buck, but I didn't think it was worth anything. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you, wow. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter, like, if you're not still holding and believing in it you know you, really, you just said if you're not believing in it and you're not acting on it don't say a word yeah because you're not part of the you're not part of that if you're you don't have it that's like funny yeah well i think we need to start wrapping <laughs> you try to protect your, oh. your covid yeah <laughs> try not to give it again to all of us I think this is where we now need to do the big three. Christine, this is your chance, your chance to tell our fans what your big three are. And listen, your big three cannot be Ethereum, cannot be Bitcoin. What, what, what should we make her other one be? Because Litecoin, I don't really care about. What, what, what should be her third one? Like, could she not be like? Um, XRP. Are you an yeah. XRP head? Yeah, I have XRP. All right, so you can't list Bitcoin, Ethereum, or XRP. What are your big three, Christine? That's three se not 13 fair. seconds. That's not fair. I'm oh going to say Doge because I'm part of the Doge community too. Um, but come on. That's so unfair. Seven seconds. No! <laughs> Do you have sheep, Christine? I don't want to answer. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> don't yep. get don't start no shit there won't be no shit <laughs> uh, edit edit edit. Um, yeah, edit all we said was she's like I'm not answering that question so we'll move on <laughs> <laughs> okay so that's not fair because I really want to say Ethereum and Bitcoin but um, I would say Doge and then I would say Litecoin okay uh, I don't know maybe could I say the ENS token, even though I don't have it yet? I'll get yes, it later. You, yes, you can say ENS. That's fine. Uh, Forte, what were your big? What are your big three? 
So Black, yeah. I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give three different what I gave last week. What did I give last week? I, last week I gave ILV, I believe only me, and then I said, what else did I say last week? MVI. Okay. So my three this week are gonna be Mana. Uh, hold on, let me think. Mana. Um, I'm trying to think more. Mana. There we go. Mana Dent. Mana Dent. And then we are going to go with. I'm gonna say GM. Oh yeah. Right. Akeem, your big three. Um. I will go with IMX for this week. IMX. I'll go with IMX. I like, I want to say ILV, but we've already touched over that. So I'm going to say QSP. Uh, I'm going to say QSP. We got, what did I just say? We got QSP. We got IMX, ILV, and QSP. And then I'll give, I'll give one that I've been, uh, I've been looking into. Uh, Avalanche. I love Avalanche. I love Ooh, Avalanche. Avalanche. Okay. All right, Dom. Your big three this time. Um, I'm gonna go with Flux. I'm gonna go with um. Let's go, KDA still, and then I'm gonna go with. Mm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go on with LTO just because I like the chart. Uh, you, you, you took one of mine actually. I had LTO. <laughs> uh. so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay out of that one. Uh, and I'll go uh, you, with... can't, you can't say Omi. You can't say Omi. Okay, okay. Well, then, that's his I'm only done. coin. It's the only coin he got. It's the only one I got left. Yeah, he got robbed. <laughs> no, no, I, I have other coins left. Um, and let's just be honest, the one that I, I, I secretively love just as much as I love Omi is Algo. I love oh, my so Algo. They didn't get your Algo either, right? Oh, because I keep my Algo on, on, the, um, on, the, on the platform because it, it gives me my, my 25 cents a day or, you know, yeah. it used to be a dollar a day. I had a lot more in there, but, you know, 25 cents a day ain't bad for free. Yeah, it's not um, bad at all. So I like Algo because of the reflections. Um, I do, I, I, I'm gonna say mana myself because that mana I do think is gonna be that the central land stuff is going through the roof. They gotta and update uh, uh, they, uh, graphics. Huh, that mana? Yeah, they gotta update them graphics. They make this, yeah. they make it look more like Grand Theft Auto we, you know, around there. Uh, it's gonna be really, woo. Look at, look at what's the right now? Look into what, Akeem? Polka City. Oh, Poker City. Well, oh, yeah, let's that, try that one. Let's go to Poker City and try that one. And What's up? My last one actually is, is Polka Dot. Dot. Oh. Polka Dot. Yeah, because Polka Dot is where all of this, I think, is being built on. Oh, man. Nice. I didn't even know that. Yeah. Baby, I'm the backside guy. You know, I like to go in and I like to, I'm, me and the team are similar. We go in, we dive really deep, and then we get to the other end and go, oh, this is where all this shit started. And so, you know, we're, we're the back end guys. We're, well, I definitely am the back end guy for other reasons. <laughs> Black A team is wild, ass. Bro. Black is wild. What? <laughs> Listen, I am a good looking black gay man. I am proud of what I do. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. You said, you funny, Black. <laughs> man, he's feeling himself right now. Yeah. You, you, the saw, you saw him with the little shrug. Yeah. You know? The man, you know, after the week he's had, he's allowed to do that. You know, I, it's, been, it's been a rough week for him. So, Listen, you know, your is, energy is great. Like, I need that energy for when you know bad things happen, or like I get COVID from spaces or whatever. <laughs> like, I need to feel and be like how you are. Forget how you be the third time, Christine. How you be waking up so late and the stock market opens? So what do you early? mean, bro? Like when you're like. When I say good morning and everyone's like, oh, my God, the day is gone. I'm like, it's 6.30 a.m. here. Like, yeah, what do you mean? So the, it, what? The oh, yeah, because yeah, you're California. But still, yeah. like, stock market has been open. What do you mean? Yeah, but we're stopping for you. 6.30 it opens. It opens at 6.30. 9.30 it starts. The Yo, you, no, I've seen your good morning text at, like, freaking, like, 12. 
like 12 o'clock. Well, night. that's only because I forget to do it. And I'm like, oh, let me do it. Oh, okay. Okay. But like, I'll wake up earlier and I don't even do it at um, 630. I'll do it like at 730 or eight or something. And it, if I miss that window, I'm like, oh, shoot. And then I'll put it in like at 10 or 11. They're like, dude, you're ridiculous. How can you just wake up? I'm like, bro, I've been awake. I just forgot to tweet. Do you guys really think I get my phone right when I wake up? And that's the first thing I want to do. <laughs> hey, that's people's perception nowadays. <laughs> everything is everything is perceived on social media if it ain't if it ain't on there like it's not true hey that's what you thought for sure you're like how are you waking up so late i'm like what do you mean well you're like really active with your followers so like i mean it, it would seem like you would be like that well then i'm doing a great job <laughs> and on that note, I want to start, you know, it, we can continue on, but I do want to say on behalf of the entire team, Christine, thank you for coming on. And yes. for our fans watching at home, join us for the next episode of The Big Three and Me with myself, Hakeem Hunt, Dominic Hamilton, and sometimes our little short friend from the great north, Andrew Forte. <laughs> on behalf of very the nice. team of The Big Three very, and Me. Very nice, very nice. Congrats, congrats on 65, man. Congrats on 65. On behalf of the team of the Big Three Army, I'm Phil Patterson, and thank you, and have a great day, and even better tomorrow. <laughs>